$10,000 to anybody that can prove me wrong here. Uh, I promise you won't. So I'm reading through old CIA files. Uh, here's a good starter is just the CIA basically, in their words, not mine, showing that a brain wave can turn into a particle just like a radio wave turns into a photon. Uh, it turns out this explains the whole universe uh, far beyond most people's comprehension. I'm going to explain it in my best layman's terms. Stick around for maybe two minutes and this will make way too much sense. So to start, I was reading a declassified document on warp drives. That's weird. Basically, bending space in one way and at a higher point in another causes space and time to move around you. Uh, those don't seem really interlinked yet until you start understanding that space and time is its own dimension. And you look at some of their summaries of this and this was written in the 80s. It was a concept, but it's talking about the Large Hadron Collider, like what CERN does. Uh, and I mean, I've seen so many articles on certain people saying that their collider is haunted. Like, there's a specter in there. It's weird. Forget all that. It's just interesting to think about. Now we go to a file like this, where they're studying research and human paranormal abilities. So think about the gateway process. I did a video on this. I did two videos on these concepts. Watch them first. They're pinned. Or just watch this one, and I'll do my best to explain it. But this is basically the fourth dimension. This is a tesseract in 4D. Uh, think about Interstellar at the end when he goes in the black hole and he's manipulating the past. How is that scientifically sound? It wasn't until now. Now here's another one of those that would make more sense to us. Picture this is your future. Say it's a kitchen. This is your present, your bathroom, and this is your living room, which is the past, like your house. But they're all moving by a default of nature and intersecting at different points. So when he enters the black hole and goes into Murphy's room, he's not in the third dimension anymore, he's in the fourth. Therefore, he can manipulate the past, backed by science. So how does this explain the universe and human paranormal abilities? So when you map out something like the Flower of Life, which I have a video on also pinned, watch it or don't, you get something like a torus, which also explains electromagnetic fields. Uh, this was not proven until we discovered that the platypus can detect who is what with its beak because of these fields. It goes underwater, its eyes and ears shut down, it's blind and deaf, yet it can pick up electromagnetic fields from your brain waves enough to know friend from food. And again, these brain waves turn into particles. We're starting to kind of get somewhere here with how does all this work? There's five dimensions. Now, here is a good example of all of these, but it's 2D. It's, you know, we can't really map that out. We can't perceive it. But picture line, dimension one, square dimension two. That would be where we live. You can go up, down, left, right, forwards, and backwards. It's 3D. Then you have the 4D, which was the Tesseract I just showed earlier, uh, Murphy's Room. And then a five-dimensional cube, which turns into a light hologram. What the fuck is a light hologram? <laughs> First, just understand how dimensions work. If you had a, an anthill, a, a pet anthill, in a 2D space, it could never know you exist because it can't perceive you. So you dump a bucket of water on it, and it's like their whole world flooded as an act of God. It's interesting to think about, but just follow it here. Us living in the 3D could never perceive this or this. But we have proof that this exists because we have space and time and ways to manipulate it. So now we look back to these CIA files and they show even in the 19th century that physicists knew that the 3D was not enough to prove the fundamentals of life, of nature. And they go on to say that it's more so our consciousness projecting thoughts out that affects our reality. How does that work and why does this make sense? They're actually all very interconnected. And again, really weird that the oldest history we have, people knew this, but this is that flower of life I'm talking about overlaid on a quantum carpet, which is used to measure density and spaces between particles. So these guys knew something we didn't, and they figured it all out with circles. Uh, the government knows it, and most of us don't. And frankly, it's pretty damn confusing until someone explains it out. But if you stick around, this will make too much sense. So picture something like this being the universe we live in projecting light inwards. Our consciousness would be a part of that because we're creating particles with our thoughts. Whether we can see them or not kind of goes over the science of manifesting, also heavily seen in the gateway files. 
Uh, Yo, it's been five minutes into the video, bro, and you still ain't gone down there and hit that like button? What you doing? Some of y'all ain't hit the subscribe. Get down there. Hit those buttons for me. Help the channel grow, man. If you want to go ahead and show some free support for the channel, that's the best way to do it. Let me know in the comment section what else y'all want to see, but let's get back to the video. Uh, it's weird. It is super weird, but it concretely proves that we live in a five-dimensional reality and by physics and getting as far down as the quantum level, it's, it's a hologram of light. And again, the platypus proves this. It, so do these gateway files and even our ancient history. We live in a hologram of light. I'm not saying this. I, I mean, I kind of am, but I'm just reading off these files. We live in a hologram of light, and we produce electromagnetic impulses through our brain, through our heart, that can directly input on our reality. So now you think about stuff like fear-mongering. little out there, but follow me. If we're all focused on something bad, something bad is going to happen. And then you look at stuff like an eclipse or the fucking war on drugs. I mean, all, all these different things, and it, it creates fear, it creates hate. Okay, follow me. If everybody loved more, it would directly change this, because as a collective, we have more power than as a singular being. I mean... I know tons of people who would talk about manifesting. In fact, all of my rich friends swear by it. I'm starting to myself because I see results. It's not one of those things that makes sense until you start looking at the science. But it's weird. Just just really like think on this for a minute. Follow dimensions upwards, and it's irrefutable. Ten grand. Prove me wrong. You won't. It is a tragedy when a romantic heart and a mature mind are in the same body. The heart doesn't know the logic, whereas the mind is always guided by reason. One yearns for a sense of freedom, to enjoy life fully, while the other wants to be responsible and sensible in order to avoid unrealistic expectations and impulsivity. The heart tries to be in control and take over whenever it encounters the optimism life has to offer and it focuses on that rare feeling. Likewise, sensibility looks onto the reasonable sides and loves the mind to be in a state of thoughtfulness and control as they divide into their own individual paths and battle to gain the lead, the body suffers. It is constantly torn between assisting the heart's desires and considering the mind's logic. The body is persuaded by reason, but is moved by emotion. It's a tragedy to have a heart that yearns for what you feel you want, and a mind that focuses on what you think you need. Really out here crying over your ex, though. Yes, why is you doing this? Like, He's gone. He died. died. Like, why is you out here crying over your ex? Like, right, you we in a whole relationship, though. Why is you out here crying over your ex? Seriously. I need closure. But you mean closure? you need closure? Like this dude used to beat your ass. <laughs> he cheated on you, and you out here crying? We've been together for three years. You out here crying over your ex because he died. Come here, man. Listen here. I can't believe that you're crying over this dude, bro. I would never listen. I would never cry over my ex. How am I disrespecting you? You out here crying over this dude. You need to like give me space. Give you space. What you mean? I can't believe. Listen, you disrespecting me, though. Like, come on. You in a whole relationship and you crying over your ex because he's dead and gone. Like, I can't believe you out here. I hope you don't think you're going to the funeral either. Like, seriously. Yes. Oh, what you mean, yes? No, you can't go to the funeral. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Why? Mine? I'm serious. So, baby. Yo, two things. The first thing. Is this real or is this fake? I don't know. Second thing is, who's right and who's wrong in this situation? Comment below and tell me who you think was right and who was wrong in this one. I want to know what y'all got to say. Was he wrong to feel disrespected or was she wrong to feel like she needed some space over about her ex? Let me know below. You there, second desk at Blue Jacket. What is your name? My name is Alexis. Alexis, please leave my lecture room. I don't want to see you at one of my lectures ever again. 
I don't understand. I am not going to ask a second time. Uh, thank you. Why are there laws? What are laws for? Anyone? Social order? To protect the person's personal rights. So that you can rely on the government? Justice? Thank you. Tell me, was I unfair to your classmate just now? Indeed I was. So, why didn't any of you protest? Why didn't any of you try and stop me? Why didn't you want to prevent this injustice? You see, what you have just learnt, you wouldn't have understood in a thousand hours of lectures unless you lived it. You didn't say anything because you weren't affected yourself. And this attitude speaks against you and against life. <laughs> you think it doesn't concern you, so it's none of your business. Well, I'm here to say, if you don't help bring about justice, then one day you too may experience injustice and there will be nobody there hey, to stand before spit you. Truth and justice oh, yeah. lives through us all and, and, and we oh, must yeah. fight for it. Because in life and work, I mean, we often live next to each other, Ooh, but not with bars. each other. We console ourselves that the problems of others are nothing to do with us, none of our business. And we go home glad at night that we're spared, but it's about yep. standing up for each other. Every day an injustice happens in business, sport, or on the tram. Relying on someone else to take care of it is not good enough. It is our duty to be there for others, yep. to speak up for others when they cannot. I am here to teach you the power of your voice. I want you to learn critical thinking to empower you to stand up for what is right, even if it means going against what everyone else is doing. Let's begin. Hell yeah, my man, man, get this off of me, bro. My man came out there and put the example in your face. You ain't doing nothing. You will lay down. You pussified. You scared to go out here and stand up for your brothers and your sisters in the street, bro. You scared to go do anything, to go put yourself out there. When you see your people getting messed up, you don't do nothing to stop. You just do this. You do that right here. You, oh, 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 let me put it on camera. Get your ass up, bitch. Go fucking do something. Era. I'm feeling quite bad, so take another token. Oh, yeah, there's jokers all around me. I'm feeling quite bad, so take another token. Oh,